Hi, I'm Jeremy. This is my wife, Tamara. And welcome to Relationship, Relationship Reality, Reality with, with the, the Garlands. Garlands. We will be reviewing and recapping Married at First Sight Reunion Part 2. Part 2. Two. Part two. Part de. Mm, I'm practicing my French because I'm about to go to France. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, the first one you refer to that. But yes, the first reunion was eventful. Yeah, a lot going on there. A lot uh, centered around Justin. Yes, and I just could not get over it. I just, I was just really fed up with Justin last time. Oh, me too. I was being quite hard on him. All right, it is time to go in depth on Alexis and Justin. Woo! It, we started with... Alexis saying she never wants to talk to Justin again. Right. <laughs> That's where we started. <laughs> Goodbye forever. Yes. And then by the time we ended, she was like, I can forgive you. <laughs> and he was like, if it happens, it happens. <sighs> yes. They are a lot. <laughs> yes. They should not be together. And, I, and I'm glad that Alexis knows it. You don't think two passionate people should be together? Yes, they can be. Passion. Passion. Ole. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they um, they don't mix well. She yeah ha doesn't have the patience for him to be able to grow. Yes. Yeah, she's not willing to go along for the ride, and that is well within her right. Yeah, yeah, I Let's don't blame honest. her. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone gets to decide, like, what mound of shit they want to deal with. Everybody comes with their own mound of shit. Oh, yeah. And you get to, de you decide, is this, a, is this a mound of shit I can deal with? No. Is this a mound of shit I can deal with? Yeah. Why didn't you do yes this way? You did no this way. And you did yes this. Freudian slip, babe. Don't bring our fight earlier into this. <laughs> anyway. Marriage. <laughs> they talk, They brought in uh, Alexis's sister and, and Justin's, Justin's brother. brother. Uh, Justin's brother, Donnell, said they shouldn't be together. <laughs> like, he didn't even think about it. Like, yeah. he already knew. He was like... <laughs> Well, what do you think about these two? They shouldn't be together. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to be married. No. no. <laughs> Justin wasn't ready to hear the difficult truths about himself. Yeah. That's pretty deep. Yeah. That's totally true. Because you have to be open and ready to hear those things. And confront them. Yes. That you don't want to believe are true, but someone else that you are very close to is seeing. Oh, sorry. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. Like, you know, maybe you're vain. You're so vain. <laughs> you probably think the song is about you. You're so vain. You're so vain. You probably think the song is about you. Don't you, don't you. Are you done? Yeah. We even talked about the dogs. Oh, of course the dogs were gonna come up. Yes. The dogs had to come up because it was such a huge, huge deal. Yeah, pivotal. Yes. So, if, just to fill you all in, if you don't remember or if you didn't see, Justin's dog, Maya, bit Alexis's dog, Newton, in the face. Yeah. When they first met each other, when they were moving in together. When right the dog, after the honeymoon. Yeah, when the dogs first met each other. Yeah, right after the honeymoon, bleeding eye, it was like a whole thing. Yeah. And come to find out, just, uh, Justin said that Maya has been in several other fights. Mm -hmm. And they sent Maya away to an obedience camp. Maya bit dogs there. <laughs> <laughs> and got kicked out of there. <laughs> Oh 
I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's sad, but yes. So Justin has Maya back. Uh, of course. Uh, hopefully she has, you know, mellowed or he won't bring her around other dogs. Well, apparently Justin's brother didn't know anything about Maya being an aggressive dog. Well, he just said, well, I've never seen her be aggressive. But well, okay, has your so... brother told you the fact that she's been in other fights? Right. And did you not hear that she also bit other dogs at the training place? Right. So what about this? Didn't you... Like, just because you haven't seen anything doesn't... Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, but okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was the whole thing. And, you know, Justin admitted, which I'm glad he did, that he was holding on to resentment toward Alexis about giving away Maya. Right. And that really impacted their marriage. Yeah, from the start. Mm -hmm. I, I think she lost trust in him in that moment because... You know, he didn't tell her that his dog had previously bitten other dogs, gotten into fights, whatever. Um, that's one thing. And then at the same time, like you said, he started resenting her because he had to give away his dog. Yeah, I think they just kind of like had such a heavy moment too soon. Yeah. And they just kind of lost faith in each other. Mm -hmm. And so then it just wasn't, they, they couldn't figure out how to come back from it. Yeah. They, they went through a traumatic experience together. Too soon. Too soon. And he didn't step up for her in the way that she wanted. Because it was too soon. And she didn't step up for him in the way that he wanted. Because it was too soon. Yeah. And that, and that was pretty much it for them, I think. That, that, oh, yeah. I don't think they ever recovered really from that. Right. Because, you know, when you're starting to, like, get to know someone, and, I mean, you're in this heightened experience, they're already married, mm -hmm. you're not expecting for, like, big traumatic events to happen right away. Mm -hmm. You're expecting that, you know, life is going to be kind of stable for a while, and then you'll build trust, and then you'll build love, and then a big thing will happen, And but you've already built some trust and some love. But when something that big happens so soon, it's hard for people to recover because... Yeah. You know, we just don't have faith in each other as humans. <laughs> we don't have faith that the other person's going to do the right thing. Right. Alexis and Justin are off on their separate journeys now. Uh, Alexis has her loft downtown, and uh, lofting it up. Justin has, you know, he said he has part of his heart back in in Lo his dog Maya. Maya. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah. Uh, I guess... We wish them the best. Yes. Onward and upward. Separately. <laughs> <laughs> All the ladies are together talking, and we go through a number of different couples and scenarios. We mostly recap uh, some of the highlights of this season of MAFS. It's a girl chat. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and we got a little bit more insight into big milestones that happened in the season. Like when Kristen went off on Mitch, it was like, <laughs> I deserve to not be an option. <laughs> and all the ladies were like, finally. We're like, oh, oh, I can breathe. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's a testament to the respect they have for one another that yeah. they, Kristen said, everybody has to be team Mitch. Yeah. And they held to that until she was like, no. And then yeah. they were like, great. <laughs> <laughs> and Lindy went off on her rant. <laughs> <laughs> but she waited. <laughs> yep, she did. <laughs> yes. We also, we also talked about the Morgan and Ben situation and how Alexis felt about telling Morgan, which she does she regret it. And she doesn't regret it, which is totally cool with me. I really feel like no regrets. You know, I feel like you make decisions and you just keep living. There's like, whatever. Anyway, so, but the thing that irritated me is still, they didn't talk about what did Ben say. Right. That was so terrible. Yeah. Like what, what was it? Kevin didn't ask. They didn't say it again. They're, they're yeah. Just a super vague situation. And so it just is suspect to me. Yeah, I don't I don't really understand what, what happened there. 
But I mean, they're not together. They're not going to be together. And it is what it is. Ugh. But the girl chat was really cute. I love the mo- I love just extra screen time for them. They're all so beautiful. Oh. And they all look so good. So I was just enjoying it. And they are like good friends. And they like love yeah. each other and respect each other. And yay, girl power. I got me a girl group like that. So it's fun to see. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, we went a little more in depth on Alexis and Justin, how Alexis was feeling during certain points, um, and how hard she tried to uh, to stay in it. Oh my gosh, it killed me when she was like, it was like every tear, I my attraction was less and less. Oh. <laughs> and she said he cried like every day. I mean, at the beginning of the relationship. At the beginning. Ah. Like at, during the time where you're supposed to like lock it all up and put on your best face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you left that on the floor? That doesn't bother me. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's vulnerability, but because I imagine at times these tears are manipulative and not vulnerable. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. With someone who's hurting like that and... And as Stasha says, emotionally unstable. <laughs> yeah. You just use everything. You just try and, and shit. And not self-aware. Yeah. I mean, we saw him pull out the weird lies about Nate. So, I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Don't go in your chest. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just disappointed because I, yeah. I see better for him. Right. And, you know, I get it. Because as someone, like, you're also a person who is uh, highly emotional and, like, you lead with your emotions. But you right. have, like, the filter and, like, you're emotional. <laughs> you're aware. <laughs> yes. And you know how to, like, not cry every day. Yeah. I mean, not every day. You know, twice a week is <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's no number. There really isn't. Yeah. But it's what, it's, it's the energy around the crying yeah. that is really hard to take on. So, I mean, I get it. But anyway, the girls are cute. They have their little bonding moment, and the boys are next. So, let's watch. Now it's time for boy chat. <laughs> <laughs> what we're calling it. All right. <laughs> well, anyway. anyway, the guys are talking. Guy gab. <laughs> Gabbing with the guys. <laughs> so, the husbands of Married at First Sight are together talking and just kind of recapping, going over highlights, same way the girls did. Yeah. And, uh. Poor big standouts. Well, of course, the tension between Justin and Nate right off the bat. Right off the bat, Justin wanted us to all know that all the guys hang out except for Nate. Yes. <laughs> it was just so shady. It was. It was not a good way to start. And it seems like all the other guys are cool with Nate. They just don't hang out. They just don't hang out as a group, you know. But, yeah. you know, I mean, whatever. Nate's a busy man. He is building things with his wife. And I understand he's focused on that. He's out here making six figures. And he is working, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um. So, yeah, gosh. The tension is still a bubbling between Nate and Justin. Yeah, there wasn't really very much interesting as often happen when guys get together. Oh, so y'all born? I mean, you know, we don't like to go deep a lot of times, you know? What do you see for your life? What's your vision <laughs> for your life? You know, like, no, it's it's like- So you don't talk to guys, say, what's your vision for your life and slide their, your hand down their back to their ass? Like not you just did me? <laughs> no, I've never done that <laughs> to anyone else but you. I know, you were a virgin when you met me at 38. <laughs> <laughs> and going through a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the boys are boring, so that's, you know, that's, all in all. Pretty much. Now, we get to go see... Oh, I think it's gonna get real now because Dr. Pepper and Pastor Cal are coming in and they are gonna hold some feet to the fire. Sizzling. <laughs> that was bad. Sizzling. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so we have a new segment. 
for the reunion with the doctors. So Pastor Cal and Dr. Pepper met with the boys who got divorced, so Ben and Mitch, Mitch. and they had a conversation with them. And it was a really nice, insightful conversation. Yeah, I usually like what Dr. Pepper and Pastor Cal have to say. Yeah. Uh, they usually give good advice and they have good insights into what's going on in relationships. Mm -hmm. I mean, there there's a reason they're the experts. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, they, they kind of went over Ben and, and Mitch's, uh, where the, their failings in the marriage, where they fell short maybe, where they felt they fell short, the things they learned from that. Yeah. Which in every failure, there's learning. So it's, it's not- Absolutely. Uh, failure is not a bad word. Nope. And it's not a bad thing. It's a chance to learn. It's a chance to grow. It's a chance to try something different. And I loved that Pastor Cal said to Mitch, you know, give yourself permission to not be an outcast. So you don't mm. think and react like an outcast. So you can act like a normal person and not like <laughs> a weirdo that doesn't like people who use reusable who don't use reusable plastics like i mean I, it's just like uh, calm down but sorry it's a way of pushing people away and yeah. it, it doesn't serve him well in the world at all and i think mitch is beginning to realize this yeah which is all we wanted yeah and luckily not at kristen's behalf because we all know she's now in new york she's going to be a very handsome wealthy investment banker and <laughs> <laughs> you know, be living her fabulous life. <laughs> all in all, great conversation. Oh, what did Ben learn? What did, yeah. Oh, he's learning to not be such a perfectionist and, and to not expect perfection from other people. Oh. And it's so, like, it's really thoughtful that he's like, I don't want to do this to somebody else, so I'm going to work on myself first. And I'm going to figure this yes. out first before I start dating. This is something right. I can relate to because I feel like I used to be in the past, like, wanting to hide Mm. things, failures, whatever I done wrong. And because I didn't want to be vulnerable about those things, what I wanted to put out in the world was... Perfection. Yeah. I guess that's perfectionism. <laughs> All right, now we have <laughs> the divorcee's couch featuring <laughs> Morgan. <laughs> and Kristen with a Y. <laughs> And of course, the experts just had glowing things to say about them. I really, I really want them to hold Morgan a little bit more accountable for her actions, but you know. You know, Pastor Cal did at the end commend her for taking the step of going to, into therapy on her own, which I think is great for her too. Yeah. Um, I, I, I too have high hopes for her, but yeah. I, I think that the experts this season did her a disservice mm. by not holding her more accountable sooner. Right. And like making it known sooner that like to hold such a massive grudge so early in is just like... Unsustainable. Yeah. And it's not fair to her and it's not fair to Ben. It's just not fair to anyone involved because you just no room for human for humanness, for mm. being thrown into a situation like that you cannot prepare for, as every person, every season says. And I was glad to see Pastor Cal apologize to Kristen for picking Mitch yes! <laughs> and pair pairing her with Mitch because I've been saying throughout the season, you can watch back over and over again, I've been pleading, Pastor Cal, why did you pick Mitch? Yes. Said it over and over again. In many, many, many videos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm glad that he... Owned it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he took accountability. Like, that was a bad move. Yeah, he did a, own it, own it. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> and, you know, rightfully so. But, you know, they're also humans too. The experts are not infallible. The experts are not robots. You don't, and you don't really know how a person is gonna react. Like, yeah. either it brings out the best in you, the worst in you, or the really, really, really worst, worst in you. And you just can't imagine that Mitch was gonna behave like that. No one could have predicted that. No, I don't think anyone could have predicted that. I wouldn't have picked Mitch, though. <laughs> I would have interviewed him. And, and been like, it's a no. Mm -hmm. Not him. <laughs> Not him. <laughs> 
Anyway, I'm glad that they said that. Um, they really gave Kristen some uh, nice praise on how she handled things because she she gave it her best effort. She and, really did. Uh, I commend her for that too. She's a freaking saint, if you ask me. <laughs> and she deserves so so much greatness, so many great things in her life. And Listen, if it were me, I would have cussed Mitch out uh, every day. Uh, <laughs> Me too. It would have been just like, he'd be like, good morning. I'd be like, you know what? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough of this. <laughs> you motherfucker. Shut your mouth. <laughs> you bald motherfucker. You're talking too damn much. Go <laughs> take a bath. How about that? <laughs> Go wash your damn feet. <laughs> Go wash your clothes. <laughs> Go wash your dishes. Go wash your ass. <laughs> Stop being a bitch. Good morning, babe. Why are you mitching? <laughs> you already mitching? You just mitching. <laughs> oh, it feels good to get it out. Yeah, gotta, gotta get the mitch out every once in a while. It's healthy. So thanks, Pastor Cal, for owning that. Uh, yeah. Let's see the experts with the couples. Next up, we have Alexis and Justin sitting down with Pastor Cal and Dr. Pepper. And my biggest takeaway from this is that they could have stayed together. I think everyone agrees they could have, but Alexis did not want to wait for Justin to get to that point, And I understand it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I, well, according to Pastor Cal, they should have stay together and they should get back together and work it out. <laughs> he was not really dropping hints. He was being very obvious in what he was saying. <laughs> yeah, very direct. Yes, he's right. He's a counselor, a therapist. He has direct communication. He said, you know, listen, you fight, you argue, you go through things and you work it out. Right. And you keep going and just get better every time. And you didn't give yourselves time to do that. Right. They, yeah, all they needed was time to get better at arguing, to get better at coming to a resolution, to get better at communicating, to avoid arguments. You know what I think what the nail was in the coffin for Alexis? Hmm. The bad sex. Mm. No stroke game. And I don't say that to be funny. I mean, it's funny, but I don't say that to be funny. I really think it was because, mm. you know, if you're not connecting intimately. <sighs> and there's all these other problems. Things. Like it gives you less patience. Oh, I see. Yeah. We always yeah. say that. Yeah. When the sex is on the reg, we're more patient to each other. We're nicer to each other. Yeah. I've been saying that for our whole relationship. <laughs> <laughs> He's nicer to me when we have sex right more regularly. That's true. Speaking of. No, goodbye. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they are not together. I guess we'll see what happens in the future. I think she's over it. I don't think she's gonna like try. No, not at all. Yeah. And, and he won't because she doesn't want to. Yes, but absolutely. If, if he would, she might want to try. That's true. It's so. She, <laughs> I feel like she could be convinced. She could be, but he does. He won't convince her because he. He's afraid of getting rejected. Yeah. Yeah. He's a little. He's sensitive, so he's yeah. afraid of rejection. Yeah. He's sitting there waiting for her to give him some indication, and she's like, "No, no, not opening that door." <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess we'll see on social media what happens next with them. So we're back with the couples all together to kind of wrap it up and see how everyone's feeling now. So I have to say this. Alexis is being a flip-flopper in her decisions like Justin is. So I feel like they're made for each other. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you know, stand by what you say and mean what you say and stand by it. <laughs> Why so many stand by it? I've had some tequila. I do love when they tie up the show in a nice little bow and tell you like where people stand, what's happening next, how they're moving on. Yeah. It's so lovely until they do a 
Where are they now special? Oh, I cannot wait for this next week. They're gonna get all the couples, the divorced couples, the recently divorced couples. The people who don't wanna be in the same room with each other. All together. <laughs> the married couples, the recently divorced, all together, it's gonna be a mess. And I'm here for it. Also, we can finally see the couples and individuals open up their social medias. Oh yeah. So we can really see where they are now. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait either. Until next time, we are Relationship, Relationship Reality, Reality with, with the, the Garlands. Garlands. Don't forget to, to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications while you're at it. We'll see you next time.